it's happening. Our next story is Porringe by Kate O'Grady. Kate O'Grady has recently moved here, born in Ireland and raised in London. She's been living in San Francisco for 30 years. She is thrilled to be back on English soil, especially as she lives in Stonehenge. And is excited to be reading its crowd short stories for the first time. To say Porringe is our shortest story of the evening in just over 500 words. Please welcome to read Porridge, Kate O'Grady. Porridge. Ellen needed a wig and she needed it fast. The party was that evening at 7 pm. Wear a wig, the big, black, bold, Helvetica letters demanded from the bottom of a pink invitation that Ellen had found in her mailbox two weeks ago, wedged between a council tax bill and an appeal from Amnesty International. The invitation is covered with psychedelic swirls, and in between the swirls are photos of a beaming, soon to be 40 Stephanie, sporting several assorted hair pieces, a huge red afro, a blonde beehive, a jet black pompadour. Wendy's wig store is located between a pawn shop and a car wash. Yes, plenty wigs. Come see, a woman's voice tells Ellen when she calls. Rows of white, faceless, polystyrene heads, topped with shiny wigs, are lined up in the window. Inside, a woman stands behind a glass counter. A female customer wearing a black coat browses the merchandise, and a man at the far end of the store eats noodles from a carton. The jangle of the doorbell makes them all glance Ellen's way when she enters. I called earlier. I'm looking for a party wig, Ellen says. The wig is hard to miss. Iridescent orange, it stands out from the mousy bobs and light brown page boys that surround it like a single red poppy in a field of grass. A cross between a saucy Betty Page and a sultry Cleopatra, the wig speaks volumes. But mostly it says, I'm the life and soul of any soiree. I'm transformed, Ellen thinks as she gazes at her bewigged reflection. Oh, sweetie, do you look beautiful? Behind Ellen, reflected in the glass and sitting at another mirror, is the woman in the black coat. She is smiling and holding one of the mousy bobs. Beside her lies another wig that she has just removed, a curly brown one. Her head is mostly bald, apart from some thin strands and a few, and a few flattened clumps of hair. Do you look beautiful, the woman says again. She speaks like Al Pacino in Scarface. Ellen smiles back, thank you. The woman behind the counter gives them both a free stocking cap before they leave. Easier to pull the wigs on, she says. The man, finished with his noodles, bursts into a rendition of Yellow Submarine, while Ellen and Sylvia, or as she says it, Sylvia, pay for their wigs. The three women grin at each other. Later, at the party, everyone tries each other's wigs on and shriek with laughter. Ellen goes out onto the deck to smoke a cigarette. It is November and cold, and she is shivering before she takes the lighter out of her bag that she needs a moment alone. Porringe. That was the colour Stephanie called Ellen's wig. Not quite pink and not quite orange, but some shade between the two. They both laughed and sipped champagne and said that yes, porringe really summed the colour up. On the deck, Ellen drags deeply on her cigarette and the only colour she can think of is the pale blue of the veins that ran beneath the skin on Sylvia's head. <laughs> 